Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, since Martin Birkin released his new book, apparently quite a few of my followers have been reading it, and I'm getting a lot of questions about it. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skill up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. All right, guys, uh, I want to say it up front, I have not read the book, I've not bought it. Um, so what I'm looking at are just things that people are sending me. They're sending me excerpts, and they have questions and everything. And I had someone ask yesterday, and I think it created a whole discussion uh, on my Facebook fan page, someone said, hey, you know, Martin is recommending for people following a lot of his methods to eat 50% of their calories from protein. Does it seem excessive? Does it make sense with what he's talking about? And they just kind of put down, I think they kind of copy pasted some of his reasons there. And all right, so let's let's look basically at the gist of what he's saying. Without me even looking at it, I read it over, I understood exactly what Martin is saying. Uh, what he's saying, is actually pretty reasonable it's actually scientific it's not bro stuff it's not uh something that he just pulled out of thin air it actually is reasonably well supported in the scientific literature so it's not even bro science at this point and you guys need to remember martin is never promoting bulking really with what he's doing uh he is promoting either people do slow lean bulking uh, he's promoting recomposition or he's promoting fat loss while retaining as much, if not all, of your muscle mass. All right, that is what he is about. And, and I think it's fair to say guys like Martin, who I don't think the guy ever goes above, what, 10, 11% body fat ever? Uh, you know, granted, he's had years and years and years of training, uh, but I think he has a pretty good idea on how to stay lean. I don't think any of us are going to argue with that. Uh, I mean, you guys can say that I don't, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, but I don't think anyone's going to say that, that Martin hasn't figured this out. And it's interesting that I think it's said in there that he does about 60% of his calories from protein. Now, a lot of people are going to say, Jason, uh, didn't you say that people don't need really, really high protein to gain muscle? They don't. And that's what people need to understand the difference. Uh, ultra high protein or protein overfeeding isn't particularly useful for gaining muscle. And I'm telling you guys right now, most of you probably don't need more than 140, 150 grams of protein a day to maximize your muscle gain in a calorie surplus. So I want to make that clear. Uh, almost none of you out there are going to benefit from going over that. You know, once drugs and stuff come into the mix, maybe. But uh, people who are drug free, people who are in a calorie surplus, who are gaining weight, 100, 140, 150, depending upon your body weight, is probably enough protein for you to maximize muscle gain. Ultra high protein diets don't have anything to do with gaining muscle. They don't have anything to do with that. But for people who are trying to maximize body composition, that's a different animal. That's a totally different animal. And I used to not want to always admit to that because I really dislike the, the supplement industry and I feel like they just want to sell protein shakes and stuff. Uh, but, you know, you don't have to actually buy protein shakes to hit ultra-high protein intake. You can. It's an option. But it's an option. That's it. People need to understand. It's an option. So, what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about muscle sparing, and we're talking about uh, thermogenic effect. We're talking about satiety, everything else. That, that's what you're looking at with ultra-high protein. And what Martin has pointed out, the biggest problem we have, and this is one reason I always tell guys quit obsessing with being so lean all the time. The reason I say that is that guys lose muscle. The, the vast majority of you out there are going to lose muscle and strength getting lean all the time. It's going to cost you. And it's because, again, the way people eat, the way people train, it really isn't an ideal environment for you guys to get big and strong. Uh, it, it's a lot more minutia involved. There's so much more nuance involved and complexity in actually gaining muscle and retaining muscle for people who want to get really lean that for most people I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth it if you're trying to get big and strong. But for those of you who are trying to maximize body composition, yeah, these ultra high protein intakes are useful and, and here's why. What, what Martin basically breaks down is that when it comes to sparing muscle tissue, because that is a big deal, the overwhelming majority of people out there when they get lean lose muscle. Right? You guys are like, I want to get to 10% body fat. You do need to understand, unless you're a total novice who has almost no muscle base, if you've already built kind of a muscle base and you've finished out your new gains, so you have a base built, you are probably going to lose muscle mass getting to 10% body fat. It's definitely down to like 8% body fat. You're going to lose muscle doing that. And it might be more than you're willing to lose. It might not just be a pound. It might be five pounds of muscle. 
what's been noted is that the composition of your diet matters. And I mean, as much as I might dislike bodybuilding and I might joke a little bit about stuff with Eric Helms, he did a lot of research on that regarding uh, protein intake. And what he found is that exceeding protein recommendations that are normally given was the only way that his natural bodybuilders that he looked at in the studies during prep were able to maintain muscle mass was through protein overfeeding. The, the, the people who ate the most protein retained the most muscle mass and they started getting down under 10% body fat. And everyone who didn't eat really, really high protein, they all lost significant amounts of muscle and it was proportionate to their protein intake. So when, when you look at it from that perspective, it, it makes sense. And what he noted, and this is what the, the literature has noted, not all calories are equal for retaining muscle. Right? We know that your scale weight, your tissue weight changes based on calories in, calories out. The composition of your diet absolutely matters. It absolutely matters for how much fat versus how much muscle you lose. And as far as being protein sparing, fat calories actually are very minimally protein sparing. And if you're protein sparing, that's what we mean. It's sparing tissue proteins. You're not breaking muscle tissue down as much. Uh, and I don't want to hear this silly nonsense, but oh, you're weight training, aren't you tearing down muscle? See, that's stupidity, guys. This is 2018. Stop saying silly shit like that. Please stop saying silly shit like that. 2018. Not a bodybuilding magazine. All right, back to the point. Uh, fat is the least protein sparing. Carbohydrates are actually pretty good at it, but protein calories are better. They do beat carbohydrate calories for sparing muscle protein, right? They beat it. And excess protein can be converted into carbohydrates to fuel your training. So when you look at it from that perspective, if you're going to be on restricted calories, getting an enormous amount of your calories from protein does make sense. It makes sense. He didn't just pull that out of thin air. There's, there's pretty good literature to support it. Pretty good literature to support it. Uh, then when you factor in things like satiation, because everything is diet adherence. That's why he does intermittent fasting, because of the diet adherence component. Uh, and again, intermittent fasting, if you're not careful, can cost you muscle tissue. But the ultra-high protein intake can offset that. Uh, but again, protein is very satiating, has a high satiety. And then you have the thermic effect as well. Uh, the higher energy turnover from uh, protein overfeeding. It, it actually works. I mean, what he's saying works, and it makes sense. Now, the argument could be made for body recomposition uh, because if you're getting that much from protein, you're getting less carbohydrates. You're getting less from your primary training fuel. And we could argue that you're not going to be able to train with really high volumes of training, particularly, <clears throat> particularly without a calorie surplus, particularly people trying to recomposition. We could argue what's going to be hard to train with really high volume uh, without a large amount of carbohydrates, and that's true, but here's the thing. When you look at it in Martin's overall system, Martin doesn't advocate really high volumes of training. Martin is really big on minimalist training, right? He's big on minimalist training, coming in and hitting big compound movements with a moderate amount of volume, with quality sets, quality reps, and a lot of weight. You don't use as much glucose up. With the, the training style that he promotes, you actually don't necessarily need as many carbohydrates to fuel the training because it's not maximum volume training. It's not really high volumes of training. So when you look at it from that perspective, uh, what he's promoting of telling guys to get 50% of your calories from protein when trying to lose body fat over recomp, it, it actually is viable with what he's talking about in terms of training. It works with the training styles that he promotes. So when you look at what he's doing in the larger system of things, uh, it makes sense. Whereas in someone who's going to do really, really high volume training, if you're going to train five, six days a week uh, with fairly high sets, this is going to be a problem. You're, you're not going to be able to necessarily get away with caloric maintenance or lower with 50% or more protein calories, you're going to have a problem with getting enough carbohydrates to train. However, he doesn't have people doing that. So the downside to what he's discussing from a training perspective doesn't exist 
if you are taking his advice uh, in totality and you're not just trying to implement what he's saying about macronutrients over to other training styles, uh, then I think it actually works. So when people are saying, what do I think about what he recommends? It's like, well, when you look at Martin's overall system and philosophy, I think what he's recommending for the protein intake is backed by good literature. It's backed by scientific literature. It's backed by evidence. Uh, he practices it himself. Uh, he gets his own real-world results, so he's got good anecdote to go with it, his own personal experience. Uh, has done pretty well with it. I think we could all agree with that. I don't think anyone's going to disagree. I'm not. <laughs> and it's backed by evidence. It's backed by a pretty large body of scientific literature. Um, so I don't think you can really create much of an argument against that until you create a straw man where you say, well, maybe in this other training environment... This different from what he recommends, it might not work as well. Well, that's possibly true. But he's recommending it inside of a larger body of his own recommendations. And in that case, it, it, it makes sense. It works. It works. It works. And I don't think there's any reason to think that it wouldn't. All right, guys. But that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.